Aloha and welcome to Central Union Church. I'm Pastor Mary and we are so glad that you're here with us today. We want you to know that no matter who you are or where you are on your journey of life and of faith, you are welcome here with us. You are accepted and loved just as you are in all of your uniqueness and your brilliance. As we prepare to worship together today, we have just a couple of announcements that we want to share before we begin. Next Sunday, May 26th, we'll be celebrating Graduate Sunday. So if you're graduating from high school or college or technical school, we would love to celebrate you. Or if you know someone who's graduating, a, a friend or a family member, we would love to celebrate them alongside you. So you can email us at news at centraluniónchurch.org and let us know. We'll just need the graduate's first and last name, their school, and the degree that they're graduating with. And the deadline for letting us know about that graduate is this coming Wednesday, May 22nd. Also, this summer, we'll be welcoming our Keiki back for a week of our annual Compassion Camp. And that will take place from Monday, July 22nd through Friday, July 26th. And it'll be from 9 a.m. until noon each day. And signups are open now for Compassion Camp. So if you'd like more information, uh, or if you want to sign up, you can call the church office or you can check your CU Weekly e-newsletter for more information about that. Also, speaking of little ones, this week I got the blessed opportunity to spend a week, or spend a day, excuse me, with a little pastor, Pastor Gabriel. Pastor Gabriel is a child at our preschool. He's four years old, and Pastor Gabriel won our Pastor for a Day celebration at the Central Union Preschool Dazzle Fundraiser. So Pastor Gabriel and I spent a couple of hours checking in with some church members, visiting with our staff, and preparing for Aloha Chapel, which took place this week with the preschool. And Pastor Gabriel also wanted to participate in our online worship service. So you'll see him later in our worship service giving our benediction. But what a blessed honor it was for me to be able to celebrate Pastor Gabriel and to watch one uh, young person coming up in the faith of Christ. And finally, friends, one final announcement, and that is that today is one of my very favorite days in the church year because today is Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost celebrates the day that the Holy Spirit was poured out from heaven upon those first disciples. And so on Pentecost, the early church was born. In many ways, today is like the church's birthday, the worldwide church's birthday. And that's why it's so, so special that today, we here at Central Union Church are also celebrating a milestone. Because today, we commemorate the 100th anniversary of the dedication of Central Union Church's, this Central Union Church's sanctuary, this beautiful worship space that I'm in right now. The cornerstone for this house of worship was actually laid in 1922, and it took about two years to build this beautiful space. But then in the week of May 18th, 1924, the sanctuary was dedicated with several worship services and celebrations happening that week. And what a century it's been for Central Union. So many people of faith have worshiped here in this space. So many stories have been told. So many lives were transformed by the good news of the gospel right here. So much work was done. The foundations for the works of justice and of righteousness that have happened in our wider community began right here. And so it is right for us to pause today to give thanks to God for this space and for these 100 years of ministry. So church, as we enter into worship on this historic Sunday, this historic anniversary, I'd like to begin by reading to you a poem called The Church in the Garden. This was written in 1924 by Mary Dillingham Freer. And Mary was a daughter of the family of church members who gifted the land for this church, for this worship building um, back in those days. So may this poem be our prayer today as we celebrate and remember the work that we have done and look forward to the work ahead. Join me in a spirit of prayer as I read this poem. Lo, here among the palm trees, our isle had flung a spire, 
a slender bud of beauty pointing higher, higher, a lifted torch awaiting light from heaven's altar fire. Make this our long-loved garden, thy garden, O our Lord, and Eden come again to men without a flaming sword, where heaven shall heal earth's sorrow, where risen thou art adored. Friends, let us join together in worship on this day. You provide the fire I'll provide the sacrifice You provide the spirit I will open up inside You provide the fire provide the sacrifice you provide the spirit yeah. I will open up inside fill me up God fill me up God fill me up God fill me up fill me up. God draws us into a community of love with people across the ages and around the world. So as you hear the word of God read to us, may God's Holy Spirit that binds us together 
Speak to us that what we hear and ponder may enliven us and stretch us to trust and follow Christ in our life and in our living. Our scripture reading today, which comes from the message translation by Eugene Peterson, is Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. When the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole building. Then, like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks, and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. There were many Jews staying in Jerusalem just then, devout pilgrims from all over the world. When they heard the sound, they came on the run. Then when they heard one after another, their own mother tongues being spoken, they were blown away. They couldn't for the life of them figure out what was going on and kept saying, aren't these all Galileans? How come we're hearing them talk in our various mother tongues? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, visitors from Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, immigrants from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, even Cretans and Arabs. They're speaking our languages, describing God's mighty works. Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make head or tail of any of it. They talked back and forth, confused. What's going on here? Others joked, ah, they're drunk on cheap wine. That's when Peter stood up and backed by the other 11, spoke out with bold urgency. Fellow Jews, all of you who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully and get this story straight. These people aren't drunk as some of you suspect. They haven't had time to get drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. This is what the prophet Joel announced would happen. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy, also your daughters. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. When the time comes, I'll pour out my spirit on those who serve me, men and women both, and they'll prophesy. I'll set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billowing smoke, the sun turning black and the moon blood red. Before the day of the Lord arrives, the day tremendous and marvelous, and whoever calls out for help to me, God, will be saved. Hear what the Spirit is speaking to us today. 102 years ago, our ancestors laid the cornerstone of this edifice, one designed and located to tell the world that God's love never faileth. On Sunday, May 18, 1924, at a service beginning at 3 p.m., this sanctuary was dedicated to the glory of God, to the honor of Jesus Christ, and to the Holy Spirit, the source of light and life. The Honolulu Advertiser reported on the dedication service with these words, bearing aloft the sacred cross with the stars and stripes following an impressive processional of clergy and laymen trod with solemn step the sword between the parish house of the new Central Union Church and the new church building for the dedicatory exercises of the beautiful structure. Members and minister of the church joined ministers and members of all the evangelical churches in Honolulu in processing into this new worship space while singing the church's one foundation. They sang the hymn we sang as our opening hymn this morning as well, From Out Their Rocky Fastness, which was a hymn written by Philip Doge for the dedication of the church in 1892. The preacher for the service was the Reverend Dr. Herman F. Swartz, who was president of the Pacific School of Religion in Berkeley, California. And in his sermon, Dr. Swartz said that from the beginning of worship, the sanctuary had been regarded as the dwelling place of God, in much the same way as the royal palace was regarded as the dwelling place of the king. He said it was the profound and doubtless reverent conviction about the localizing of God, which helped to lead the devout Hebrew to center his religion in Jerusalem. He went on to argue that God 
was not confined to the building that was being dedicated, but existed and worked outside the four walls of this place. There can be a tendency when we celebrate a dedication of a worship space, of a church anniversary of any kind, to think very specifically about our building and to give thanks for those who planned and built it and have cared for it. And at one level, that is a good thing to do. Our congregational ancestors who trace their roots to the pilgrims, though, would never have dreamt of referring to their building used for worship as a church. Heaven forbid the very idea. They were always very careful to refer to such things as either chapels or meeting houses, never churches, because church is always people and quite often nothing to do with a building. Today is Pentecost Sunday, the day when the Spirit came. In the Acts of the Apostles, we read the story of the coming of the Holy Spirit to the disciples. And there's no doubt that this story of different languages, of wind, of flame, of people from every nation, was written as a response to the story of the Tower of Babel in the book of Genesis. In the Genesis story, humanity is fragmented into different language groups. In the New Testament story, Humanity is brought together as one by the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. In a sermon, the Apostle Peter describes this event as the fulfillment of God's dream. In the book of Acts, the central character is the Spirit. The Spirit gives birth to community at Pentecost and directs the community's mission, which is so appropriate then that we are celebrating the 100th anniversary of of the dedication of this sanctuary. See, Pentecost roots are in Judaism, for it was very much a Jewish festival before it was a Christian festival. And it occurred 50 days after Passover, and it links Israel's much older agricultural cycle to her religious history. It celebrates both the completion of the harvest as well as the giving of the law to Moses on Mount Sinai. As Marcus Borg says, it was about the creation of a new kind of community, the way of living together radically different from life in Egypt. Today, we celebrate more than just an event in the past, but a starting point to a future for us all. It is about the creation of a new community in Christ, a community anointed by God's Spirit and in continuity with the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, a community that calls forth peace and love and inclusion in the world here and now. This divine moment of unity can be heard in the reading from Acts. The descent of the Spirit as tongues of fire enables the disciples to speak in a universally understood language. The individuals in the crowd from multiple countries all hear the disciples in their own language. It is an amazing account and links powerfully to an ancient story in Genesis. At the Tower of Babel, God scattered the pretentious human race across the earth, confusing them by having them speak many languages rather than one. At Pentecost, God reunites the scattered people into a new beloved community, one that is able to bridge differences and value diversity. Pentecost is thus the beginnings of the reunification of humanity, where there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave or free, male nor female. The followers of Jesus became this community of reconciliation and renewal through the presence of the Spirit. And they began to share everything they had. Former enemies became friends, and people laid down their swords and picked up a cross. As the book of Acts goes on to say, there were no needy persons among them. It was on the day of Pentecost, 50 days after his resurrection and 10 days after Jesus had ascended to heaven, that the Holy Spirit was poured out on Jesus' followers who were gathered in Jerusalem. Before Jesus had returned to heaven, he had instructed his disciples to wait in Jerusalem and wait to be clothed with power from on high. When the Holy Spirit came, 
It was powerful and dramatic. A sound like a violent roaring wind filled the house where they were sitting, and tongues of fire rested on each of them, and they were filled with the power of God and began speaking other languages, languages they had not learned as the Spirit enabled them. The Holy Spirit that came on that first Pentecost is the same Holy Spirit that is active in the church and world today. It is the Spirit that leads us forward today and gives us great hope. As Michael Moore would suggest, the story of Jesus reveals not only God, but also our capacity as human beings to give expression to God's Spirit. We live with a belief and with a sense we are spirit people. Children of God, each and every one of us. Those at the first Pentecost experienced the same thing. Those who built the sanctuary realized the same thing. They realized they too were bearers of God's Spirit and could live courageously in the world as Jesus did. And so we are to embrace the Spirit, this rushing wind or whisper, this constant nudging from within and bear fruit in our own world, our own country, in our own time. Pentecost, therefore, is far more than a past event. It is about a future for us all. It is a future which we are to build together with God. As Greg Jenks believes, engagement with the Spirit leads us to a much larger sense of God. It leads us to the character of Christ. It enmeshes us in a web of love from which all reality emerges, all life emerges. See, this is where our future lies. So today, in a world riddled with violence and hate, the Pentecost vision invites us not to settle for some ancient story or a church community as it is, but to dream for a church as it could be, and to have faith that the Spirit of God, which has always been present in the world, will always be present in the church. And so today we should wear our red with pride, believing that the Spirit of God is reconciling us to each other, moving sometimes as a still, small voice, and sometimes as a raging wind or fire, calling, inspiring, and sometimes dragging us, kicking and screaming into the future, to form a new community of love and peace and harmony and belonging with one another. So today, we give thanks for those who built this edifice, but more so that the scriptures have indeed been read and the gospel proclaimed, that the Holy Spirit has, of God has moved and is moving among us, within each of us, and between us. You know, buildings come and go. Many changes have been seen in this place and in that, those that went before it. Today, we give thanks for the generations who have worshipped here, met with Christ here, and heard and proclaimed the gospel and dreamed the dreams of the kingdom here. That gospel, of course, has been proclaimed not only in word but in deed. The good news to the poor has been lived as well as spoken. Times change, but in the best of times, and perhaps especially in the worst of times, People have lived out the gospel dream of love, of peace, unity, and belonging in this place. What I'm saying is that it's no good having a building unless Christ is found there, proclaiming the gospel. And it's no good hearing the word of the gospel unless we respond and live it in the living of our daily lives in the community outside these walls. If history teaches us anything, it is that over the years we need to rebuild, redevelop, renew, and revision to cope with the crises of the past and rise to the challenges of the future. As in every generation, we are challenged to be worthy of those who have gone before us. And I like to think that as we think and pray about our work here, all those who brought us to this place, our forebears and predecessors, are looking are looking down on us with joy. And I wonder if we will please them. Only, I'm sure if our church is more than bricks and mortar, only if it opens its, its doors to the needs of our community, only if it hears and lives the dreams of peace and love, which are the gospel. 
I don't know what the future holds for Central Union Church, for Hawaii, or for the United States, for the world. But what matters is that as God's people, we still love and dance and dream. There may be challenges ahead, but as long as we continue to build with the Lord, as long as we listen to the man of Nazareth speaking to us, as long as we open the doors of our building, live our faith outside the walls of this place, as long as we remain open to each other and embrace and accept each other as beautiful people made in the image of God, as long as our young folk see visions and our old folk dream dreams of a better world, as long as we are filled with God's Holy Spirit, as long as we dance the resurrection story, as long as we break bread together, as long as there are songs of love and dreams of peace in this place, then whatever the world may throw at us, this place, and more importantly, this community of faith can be a beacon of hope and light and love in a world and community that needs it so much. Then we shall build with the Lord. And as the psalmist knew of old, those who build with the Lord shall not build in vain. Amen. Yeah.
restless, stir me from blessedness, wind, wind on the sea. And so as we move into a time of prayer, let us begin with a moment of silence. Loving and holy God, as we gather on this Pentecost Sunday to celebrate this beautiful building that was built and dedicated for the purpose of worshiping and glorifying you, we offer our prayers to you today for our community of faith, Central Union Church, here in Honolulu, Hawaii that your Holy Spirit may inspire our worship, lead us into deeper fellowship, and help us to build authentic community, that we may continue to pass on our faith, hope, and love to succeeding generations, that we may serve the community in which we live with commitment, vision, and enthusiasm, that within our faith, Ohana, there may be found comfort for the sorrowful, strength for the anxious, compassion for the sick, and concern and love for all. We pray for the ministers, staff, and leaders of this church, for all who hold positions of responsibility in worship, teaching, caring, or administration, and for each member with their particular gifts, that together we may fulfill our calling eagerly, conscientiously, and with imagination, strengthened by your Holy Spirit and upheld by one another's prayers. We pray, loving God, for those for whom we are particularly concerned, those who are ill at home or in hospital, those who are housebound or unable to get to church, those who are bereaved or face losing someone that they love, those who are worried or depressed, and for those who no longer come to church, that they may be drawn back into this community. Loving God, we thank you for the lives of your faithful people in every age and especially for members of this community who have been witnesses to your love. We with them are the living stones with which you built your church. And we pray that we too may remain faithful to our calling as did your son Jesus Christ, that by your grace our lives may be the examples on which those after us may build, to your praise and to your glory. And now, loving God, as we celebrate the 100th anniversary of the dedication of this sanctuary, as a body of your people and as individual members of that body, we rededicate the sanctuary and ourselves to the work of ministry that you have called each of us to do. We rededicate ourselves anew to living a life that reflects your presence with us and your love for each one of us. We rededicate our lives to your service and the service of others, Loving God, renew and strengthen in us the joy of knowing you and our faith and trust in your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Church, we are living, breathing messages of God's love for the world. This is our work of faith and our labor of love and our steadfastness of hope in Jesus Christ. Like the earliest Christians, we are here in this place because of the commitment and faith and generosity of others who shared the good news of the gospel in their time. So we turn now in our time and share our faith and commitment through generous giving to support the ministry of this church in Christ's name. You may give online at centralunionchurch.org or send a check by mail to the church using the address on your screen. Let us offer up the talent, time, and treasure that has been graciously entrusted to us and offer up ourselves in service and praise. May these gifts be multiplied and used through the power of the Holy Spirit to accomplish Christ's work and love in the world. Thanks for coming to worship. Thanks for coming to worship. God bless you. God bless you. Go in peace.
Go in peace. Amen. Amen. Okay. Christ be so